Now, WordPress 6.6 .6 is due to be released in the next couple of weeks. And with it, there are a couple of key new features that I think are definitely worth taking a look at. Now, there's no guarantee these will actually be shipped with 6.6, .6, but that is the aim. Anyway, the first one I want to take a look at is called Pattern Overrides. Now, patterns, by their very nature, are like template blocks. You can create them and then you can save them, but they do have a little bit of a superpower. And that's what we're going to look at. So what I've done is I've created a basic hero section. If we open up the list view, you can see it's very simple. It's just a stack with a group, and we've got a couple of items inside there, some headings and a group of buttons. So what we're going to do is we're going to select our stack. We're going to choose these three dots, and we're going to come down, and we're going to say create a pattern. So this allows us then to give it a name, to create a category to put in if we haven't already got one, and if we want to, we can have these synced. So changes we make will synchronize across all different iterations. But it goes much further, so stick with me. So we're going to call this my hero. I've already created a folder called WP Tuts, and we'll set this as a synced pattern. We'll click Add, and now we have our pattern available. You'll notice now we have this Edit Original, and we've got my hero. Let's delete this. And now if we come up to the plus and come into patterns, come down to the folder WP Tuts, and you can see there's our new hero section. Click add it in, job done. The problem is we can't make any changes to this content. So how do we deal with it? Let's come back out of here and we're going to go into the appearance section and into editor. Then we're going to open up patterns and this will show us all the different patterns that are part of WordPress. At the bottom, there's our WP Tuts. So now we're going to open this up. And there you can see is an identical copy of it. If we make changes to this, so we'll change this from Hero Section Title to something else, and we click Save, every instance will have that change made to it, which is not ideal in some circumstances. You may want to use this, but change the actual content. But retaining all the styling, we can do it. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up the right-hand panel, and what we're going to do is open up the left-hand list as well. So we'll select our heading to start off with, our Hero Section header. Come over to the right-hand side and come to Advanced. Scroll down and you can see we've got this option called Overrides. If we choose Enable Overrides, we can give this a name. So we'll call this My Hero Main Title and click Enable. We've now made that editable and we can make changes on an instance-by-instance -instance basis. So we can set this up for anything we want. So if we come to the second set of options, do the same thing again, Enable Overrides, click Enable, do the same thing for our buttons. Now you'll notice that we don't have the option here. We need to expand this group out and choose the specific button or buttons we want to make available. So now if we come in, choose Enable Overrides, and there we go. So we've made these three sections editable. Let's click Save, go back out, We'll edit our page now where we've got our hero, and you'll notice that we can click inside any of these and we can make changes. Make changes to the second section, the button itself. And you can see these are editable. So we'll click Save. So now let's go and add another instance in. So let's scroll down, click our plus, and we'll search for my hero. There we go. We'll click to add that in, and you can see now we have two instances but they are different. So we can apply this as many times as you want to, any way we want to. Now let's say, for example, let's save this. We'll go and edit our original. We'll choose our stack. Go over and choose our image, and we'll replace this with a different image. You see, now we've applied a different image. We'll click Save. And now if we go back to our page, you'll see our background has been updated, but it leaves all the editable options completely intact. Now, there are obviously limitations on how you can use this. As you can see, we can't currently set the background image. At least I haven't found a way of doing it. So we can make that an editable option itself. So there is that limitation. But this pattern override does open up a ton of possibilities, especially if you're handing off to a client and you want to give them a certain level of control while retaining all your design aspects. So that's pretty cool. Now, the second feature that I think is very useful, and I'm glad to see, at least in its basic form, it is making its way into WordPress 6.6, .6, and that is the CSS Grid. Now, CSS Grid gives us a lot of flexibility when it comes to the design. I have found this is quite glitchy at the moment, but this is still a release candidate. This isn't the final version. So I'm hopeful this will make it into 6.6 .6 when it releases in a couple of weeks. Okay, so let's take a look. 
We'll click and we'll just go into grid. And you see that gives us the ability to add a grid in. And this will, by default, add in a three by three grid. We can change this over from the sort of 620 wide to wider, or we can go complete full width. Let's set this back to wide width for now. You'll also notice if we take a look at the right hand side, we've got the options to switch between auto and manual. So the auto will automatically create the columns based upon the size of the minimum column width we've got set. So we've got the options for pixels, rems, and m. So let's say we'll put this to pixel value for now so you can see visually how this works a lot easier. And let's say we want to set this to something like 350. You'll see now what that does is it says there's space here for two. Pretty cool. You'll also notice if we come into manual, we can just set up the number of columns that we want. So we can increase or decrease this as we see fit. So let's take a look by adding some content in and see how this works a little better. So let's just come in and add in a pattern. We add my basic block in and you can see there, that's been added in. Let's duplicate that a couple of times. There we go. We now have six instances of that inside our grid. And you'll notice that our grid automatically sets itself up accordingly based upon the parameters we set. So we come back into our grid. We can adjust our columns inside here. You can see everything scales accordingly. Come back over to auto and again, do the same thing here. So we'll set this to be pixels, for example. And we'll say we'll set this to 300. You can see that gives us three by three. Set it to 350. So things will automatically scale based upon that minimum column width that we set. And then if we come into any responsive modes, you'll see that we'll use those values. So when it drops down to tablet, it pushes it over to a single column and the same for mobile view. Come back out. Let's make this a bit smaller. So let's say something like, say something like 250. You can see we get two columns. Go to mobile, single column into desktop, four columns. So it's it's responsive. Again, like I say, it is pretty limited on what we can do at this point in time. Now, the other cool thing that is nice about this, although it is a little bit finicky to get it to work, is that with when you're working with CSS Grid, you can adjust things like the rows and columns and things like that, the space that any of these elements take up. So for example, we can grab this first one, and we'll say we want this to stretch over two. And there you go, that now updates accordingly. And you can see we get a little bit of a visual glitch there where these other ones are not showing up properly. But we can do the same thing here. We can click this one and say we want to drag this over two, for example. Or we can undo that and we can say we want this one to span two rows. So you can see how this creates a more visually interesting layout using those options. So pretty cool how you can do this. And hopefully this is something that will expand as it moves forward. Probably the first version is going to be quite limited on how it works, but then hopefully we will start to see more expansive changes being brought in to give us more control and flexibility using CSS Grid. Now, another feature that I think is definitely interesting is what's called rollback for plugin auto updates. Now, if you've ever set up auto update as part of WordPress or you've had it left on by accident, you'll know that this can update a plugin and ultimately take your site offline and you maybe not even know about it. Well, what this does is this will automatically revert that plugin back to the previous working version if it finds there's an issue with it. How reliable that is, I don't know because I can't test it at this point in time, but it is an interesting feature. The other thing that I think is super interesting is that if you're a main WP user, their new update is going to work in conjunction with this. So if you have an auto update and you're using main WP and connected to the site and that does fail and it rolls back, you'll be notified about that inside your dashboard. And it'll give you multiple different locations where it'll show you that that rollback has taken place. That is pretty cool. So I'm looking forward to being able to test that out where everything is rolled out and we have this fully working and I've got a demo site that I can set up to try out. But those are the three key new features in WordPress 6.6 .6 that I think are definitely worth talking about. But what do you think? Are these things that will make you take a look at using Gutenberg or WordPress core full site editing and so on for yourself? Or it is still just all too much and you just don't care that much about it? Let me know in the comment section down below. As always, all applicable links are in the description. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tats. And until next time, take care.